everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about a book I read recently called Americana and the author is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And this was originally a book I had put on my list of books from last year that a lot of people were raving about and that made a lot of the top 10 lists at the end of the year. So I kind of went through and made a list of my own of like, I didn't get to read these books, but a lot of people are talking about them, so maybe I should check them out. And this was one of them. And one of the reasons I didn't get to it is because I was a little intimidated by it because it is quite long and uh, long books do tend to put me off initially. And it um, takes place, um, well, it takes place in the U.S. and then also in Africa. And I just notice a lot of books set in Africa and the Middle East I'm a little bit apprehensive toward because they do deal with some difficult subjects usually. I honestly didn't know what this book was about until recently. I just knew that the general idea of it. And in general, I don't like to read about books like that or books that, you know, talk about really horrible things happening, you know, like with children and orphans and poverty and things like that. I know it exists. I'm very aware of it, but I just don't enjoy like having to relive, you know, seeing or reading about, you know, wonderful characters going through these horrible struggles. So uh, it's just not a type of book that I like to read personally. So that was another one of the reasons that I put it off. But um, then I heard it spoken about again on uh, Books on the Nightstand, a bookish podcast that I absolutely love. And I think in that episode, uh, one of the people said that they never actually mentioned that and that they went back and reread it and it was just so fascinating and I like I said I didn't know what this book was about so when um, I think it was Anne was talking about it on the podcast and going into detail I was like wow this sounds really interesting I should definitely check it out so I read it on my Kindle and it totally hooked me and I got absorbed into it the pages were going by even though it is very long almost 500 pages I believe um, I didn't really feel like it was dragging or that, you know, oh, I have to finish this book. It was like I really wanted to read it. It was so fascinating. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, it does tell the story of a woman named Ifemelu. She's from Nigeria, and she comes to the U.S. to um, attend university, and it talks about her life in Nigeria before she came and also her challenges in America, not just, you know, coming here um, as a person from Africa, but also financially and, you know, kind of navigating those waters. And it was really interesting to read about her life in Africa because I know that there are, you know, big cities there and it's very, you know, modernized and things like that. But I think the media just um, has this idea of, oh, Africa equals, you know, like people living in huts and starving and, you know, all these horrible problems. And I confess that was definitely, that's kind of my impression so when I you know read books like this and you know it's like oh people just live everyday lives they have the normal drama they go to class they go to parties they wear you know fashion and they're concerned about being cool and all of that you know of course obviously these people are just like people everywhere but um, for some reason that just really jumped out at me and made me realize my own preconception about life there and what it might be like. And I mean, of course, Nigeria has a bad reputation for email scams and all those types of things, uh, which I don't, I don't think really came up, but th there's that there as well. And, um, you know, people trying to commit like immigration fraud and things like that, which was touched on a little bit, I think, as well. So um, that was very eye-opening. It made me think about, you know, myself, about the world. And then when she came to America, I mean, everybody was like, oh, you know, you go to America and it's like you have it made. And so she comes here and stays with um, her aunt, I believe. And I mean, they're so poor. She can't find a job. She has to, you know, do some kind of humiliating things. And it made me realize even about my own country, you know, being from America and living here, about how people have this idea about how wonderful it is here. And it is compared to, you know, some other places. Of course, it's all in comparison. And at the same time, a lot of people come here and just really struggle. And, you know, it's not this necessarily land of dreams that they thought it was going to be. And the same with the UK. One of the characters um, immigrates there and, you know, really has a lot of struggles and hardships. And it was just really surprising that, you know, people aren't doing as well as maybe they think they will when they come to another country. And, you know, why is that and some of the issues around that. So, again thought-provoking on so many levels and one of the big themes throughout the book is about race because she comes from Africa where she is just 
a person and comes to a place where she's in the racial minority and suddenly she's now a black person and also an African person and the sort of divide between people from Africa and African Americans who are from the U.S. and whose families are from here who have lived here for hundreds of years but I mean originally came from Africa or somewhere you know in the Caribbean or something like that and um, the cultural difference and also I remember becoming very aware of this when I was in college and she touched on this as well about you know the black student union like the student group versus the um, African student union or like um, student group like that and how people kind of don't want to be associated with the other one and I remember you know some people from students from Africa saying like oh we don't want people to think that we're African-American because we're different and you know African-Americans have a bad reputation in our eyes and we want to be kind of separate from that and then also the differences between different people from different countries in Africa and the reputations and sometimes you know it's surprising that people that get discriminated discriminated against actually discriminate within their own race or you know against other people you know so and this happens I mean in other countries as well you know um where people just say oh even though we're all maybe Spanish speaking we're different from them because they're Colombian or they're from you know Mexico or something like that but then you know as a group when they come to the U.S. they get discriminated against and some people find that really how can that be if you understand the pain how can you perpetuate this and I won't go into why I I think that is um, that's a topic for another video probably not on this channel it's not really book related but it's just part of you know this human conditioning and the separation that we feel from one another and things like that as well as I'm sure many other factors but that was again I mean the key word for this book I feel is just so thought-provoking so much food for thought so much to contemplate on um, I'm sure this was probably picked for a lot of book clubs and there's just so much to discuss here discuss here it's so rich and eye-opening and one of the things I came across in this book was I, I've been looking for for a long time I remember I took a class in college and they talked about privilege Privilege and ways that it comes across and maybe some subtle ways and there was a paper uh, on that that we were given as a handout and I I mean I probably threw it away I think I actually ended up dropping the class but it really did stick with me and I've been looking for this for some time and I don't know that this is the exact paper but um, there were some examples given in this book and I'm so glad I stumbled across it now and I read this book on my Kindle so I'm just gonna bring it up really quickly and read some of those and so it was about, um, let's see, um, do you, um, if you answer no to these, then you probably have white privilege. And so well, some of them were like, when you want to join a prestigious social club, do you wonder if race will make it difficult for you to join? When you go shopping alone at a nice store, do you worry that you will be followed or harassed? When you turn on mainstream TV or open a mainstream newspaper, do you expect to find mostly people of another race? Um, do you worry that your children will not have books and school materials that are about people of their own race? When you apply for a bank loan, do you worry that because of your race you might be seen as financially unreliable? And it goes on and on and on. And it's not necessarily like, oh, people treat you special necessarily because you're white, but that you just don't even have to think of these things or worry about these things and you just take it for granted. And it's so true. And I remember when I read that, it was just like mind blowing. I was like, whoa, this is, is really true. Um, and so that I'm glad I came across that. It's in this book. And now I have it as a place to reference when I want to. Um, so definitely this book made me think a lot about that. And it made me realize that I'm, you know, probably living a pretty, I don't know, sheltered or insulated life because I don't notice these things or experience them. And, but it also made me realize that just because I don't see them or encounter them or, you know, have friends that mention them necessarily, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. And so that I kind of feel like the world is a lot nicer than it is. And I mean, of course, that's you know is how I choose to focus I don't watch the news and things like that but it made me aware that people out there are experiencing these things that it's all very real and that it's very important to take steps to you know create change in the world around this issue 
and in general and reading books like this is one way to you know open your eyes and realize what's going on educate yourself but it was done in such a beautifully well-written way the character of Ifemalu was so interesting so engaging I mean she felt so real to me I thought about this book so much after I finished it and I just wanted to like be friends with her because she was so cool so educated and uh, just so interesting and I thought you know the way she views the world is so unique so this book is really well done I'm really interested to possibly read books by the author um, I think a lot of her books are quite long but they've gotten such raves and now that I've read this one I'm definitely less hesitant so this was kind of a long video but there's so much to say about this book I'm sure a lot of people have read it already so um, Definitely let me know if it had such an impression on you, what it left you with, why you liked it or didn't like it, and if you're hesitant to pick it up like I was, I definitely encourage you to give it a try. So yeah, let me know what you thought of the book in the comments or if maybe this video has prompted you to try it, and I'll see you in a future video about the next book that I've read. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye!